is it ever possible that one tenth times one tenth times one tenth a bunch of times would be greater than 10 times 10 times 10 a bunch of times? It seems strange that that would even happen. I'm thinking though that if n is zero, then they'd be equal, right? One tenth to the power of zero is the same thing as 10 to the power of zero. In both cases, it's just one. And certainly if n is positive, then for sure 10 times 10 times 10 is always gonna be bigger than one tenth times one tenth times one tenth. But what happens if n is negative? Let's think about that right after the intro. So with a negative exponent, we just have to think about the situation as if it's in the denominator of some fraction where the numerator is 1. But that kind of turns everything on its head in this case because suddenly it's not 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth a bunch of times, it's 1 over 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth, and the 10 times 10 times 10 a bunch of times turns into 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 a bunch of times. So it turns out that if n is negative, then these bases essentially switch. I mean, what used to be 1 tenth is now 10, and what used to be 10 is now 1 tenth. So that means that as long as n is negative, we know also that n is an integer, so, so I guess you'd say for any negative integer value of n, the answer to this question would be yes. But if n is not negative, so if n is at least zero, the answer to the question would be no. So that means we can rephrase this question to, is n negative? Or if you want, you could ask, is the integer n, since we, we do know it's an integer, is the integer n negative? Now statement one tells us that n is to the right of negative 10 on the number line. So is it negative? Uh, well, it certainly could be negative, but it could go all the way up to positive infinity. So statement one doesn't actually tell us whether n is positive or negative or zero. What about statement two? That one tells us that n is to the left of 10 on the number line. So is it negative? It still could be. It's anywhere to the left of 10, but it's not necessarily negative. So we do have to combine the statements in this case because neither statement is sufficient on its own. And when we combine them, we still don't know which side of zero n is on. It's somewhere between negative nine and positive nine, but all of those integer values in that range are fair game. Some of them are negative, some of them are not negative. So even when we combine these statements, we can't definitively answer the question, and therefore the correct answer here is E. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.